Law enforcement sources are telling ABC News that right now authorities are carrying out searches at properties associated with P. Diddy. This is all part of a federal investigation into human trafficking. They also say that this investigation has been ongoing now for several months. They add our sources that an arrest does not appear to be imminent at this time, but what you are looking at right now is live video of one of these uh, searches being conducted. Now, this is a search that is happening at Sean Diddy Combs, Los Angeles Homes is in the Beverly Hills area. Uh, so you can see a tremendous amount of law enforcement present there all around that home. Uh, so this search just began here. There's also, as we understand, another search being conducted on the other side of the country uh, in Miami because we are hearing from Homeland Security uh, that there are investigations going on using the assistance of HSI Los Angeles and HSI Miami along with local law enforcement partners. Uh, we do understand that they will provide us with updates as possible, uh, but this goes into um, multiple allegations against Sean Diddy Combs over the years. There have been several civil suits against him as well, uh, including human trafficking, all of which uh, he has denied as this has been ongoing. But again, clearly an escalation that we are seeing play out live right now in Los Angeles. I want to bring in our ABC News contributor and trial attorney, Brian Buckmeyer, who I know, Brian, you have been following this case for many months uh, and you bring it up to me all the time. And now I wouldn't call this the culmination. In fact, probably this is just the beginning, right? So what do you make of the fact that they've decided to carry out these two searches simultaneously and on other sides of the country here? So Kayla, you're right. I've been talking to those about this for too long, but what, what does it get you? What does a person need to have the ability to search a home? Probable cause. So what I'm doing is I'm looking backwards. How could a judge grant the ability to search these two homes and why would you do it simultaneously? Probable cause being the belief or at least having the quantity of information that a crime either did happen is happening or is going to happen. That's how law enforcement must have to prove uh, to a judge or a court why they have the opportunity or the legal ability to search someone's home. Now, why would you do it in conjunction from one property and another at the same time? Law enforcement typically does this because they are worried that information or property or evidence may be hidden away or destroyed while you're searching one property. And so they're looking for something to corroborate the belief that they have that a crime did occur. And as you pointed out, out earlier, he's facing multiple allegations of sex trafficking. So perhaps that is the crime in which they're investigating. Perhaps that is what they're trying to seek more information from. But in order to search a home, you have to have probable cause. The only question is probable cause of what? Probable cause. And so, Brian, as, as you look at this and you watch this and we'll shout if we see anything, any more movement on these screens. But it is important to note, right, that this is all being run out of the Southern District of New York here. So there is a tremendous amount of coordination happening uh, within law enforcement at the highest levels. Absolutely. And the reason why I believe it's being coordinated out of the SDNY or the Southern District of New York, which encompasses for the most part uh, Manhattan, is a lot of the civil allegations stem from there, whether it be Cassie or the other four allegations or civil lawsuits that stem from it afterwards. And so what it appears to be, at least if you're thinking this is connected to the civil lawsuits, are that the SDNY is coordinating with the other agencies in Miami as well as Los Angeles to search the properties of Sean Combs to see if there's any evidence of that. Now, I can't think of anything off the top of my head what would be evidence of sex trafficking, um, predominantly something that might stick out as to something to corroborate what we've heard in these, in these civil allegations. But if they find it, it could lead to further investigations. At this point, we're hearing that there's no potential arrest, but it doesn't mean there wouldn't be one in the future based on either more information collected or if they're finding whatever it is that they're hoping to find in these two locations. And Brian, we do want to mention that we were initially told what we were showing our viewers here is a home in Los Angeles, California, near Beverly Hills. That is not the case. The, what you're seeing on your video uh, on your screen is, in fact, Miami. And then they are also searching a home simultaneously uh, in Los Angeles in the Beverly Hills area at the exact same time. And, and to Brian's point here, law enforcement does that often in an effort to make sure that these searches can be conducted without sort of tipping off anyone else that might be involved, which doesn't give anyone any time to uh, do anything 
questionable uh, with evidence. So you're getting a, a larger shot there. You can see now just how close that home is to the water uh, as our affiliate helicopter is flying over this home again in Miami as it is being searched. Um, and um, I want to now bring in our ABC News contributor and former FBI agent Brad Garrett. Br Brian Buckmeyer, don't go anywhere because I have several more questions for you as well. Um, but Brad, as you're watching this, uh, first of all, can you explain to us, um, Brad, what that vehicle is that we're seeing right there, that big white truck? Well, I can't see, I don't have a screen up to see it, but it, if it looks like a cargo truck or looks like a any sort of truck that you could put evidence into. So since we don't know, Kenna, what they're looking for, I can give you a list of what I think they're looking for, uh, is that you have to have a crime scene search vehicle to go in to, with the various things you need to do to search. So my guess is it's that, because my sense was this wasn't, they weren't going there to arrest anybody. This was to do a search. Uh, and so they took everyone probably from the evidence response teams of maybe the FBI and DHS to do this search. Yeah, to, so a large vehicle to collect evidence, it does also look like it has some kind of satellite uh, up in the air as well. We're also seeing uh, local news in the area, and you're seeing uh, law enforcement, Brad, sort of walking down a very long driveway uh, to enter the home, and you're not seeing, you know, it's not a chaotic scene at all. Uh, definitely not, and you're yeah. right. To, uh, our sources are saying that an arrest at this point is not imminent. Right. So, you know, quickly, let's, why, did, why were they able to go in there? To Brian's point, how did they convince a judge to go in there? You have to have a link directly to these two houses. In other words, do they have video of, of these, some of these acts that are being alleged in either location or both locations? Is there, are there witnesses? People that have come forward. Of course people have come forward. Can they put... Uh, acts in these houses, what they, maybe they were there firsthand. Is there CCTV that could be seized? Does he actually have video that he collected uh, while these acts were going on? It's not uncommon in these types of cases. So it's all about what happened in those houses that law enforcement convinced a judge that there may be elements of the crime inside these houses. All right, thank you so much for that analysis. I also hope we can get some video up of the uh, raid that's happening in Los Angeles as well so that we can learn uh, a little bit more. But in the meantime, you're seeing, again, more video uh, of P. Diddy there. Um, but again, we are talking right now about a simultaneous search of two of his properties, one happening in Miami, the other one happening in Los Angeles. Uh, and we just have some new reporting. Uh, we're told here by our ABC's Aaron Katursky uh, that the women who have made public accusations against Diddy are welcoming Monday's launch enforcement activity, we're told. Uh, in fact, there is a statement from one of their lawyers uh, where they're saying we will always support law enforcement when it seeks to prosecute those who have violated the law. Hopefully, this is the beginning of a process that will hold Mr. Combs responsible for what they call his depraved conduct. And so I want to bring back in here Brian Buckmeyer. Uh, and Brian, it was the first thing we talked about, right, that this, uh, this is not the culmination of this. This potentially could be the very beginning. So, Brian, what do you make of, first of all, that the lawyer are jumping right out to talk about this immediately, not wasting any time to draw attention to it. Well, this is beneficial not only for their clients, but also for their cases. If we look to the last uh, alleged victim, Rodney Jones Jr., who put, came out with allegations that seem to be very similar to Cassie, as well as the other three uh, women who brought charges, or brought allegations, sorry, he said that Sean Combs has cameras throughout his home that records a lot of these events. In his complaint, that being Jones Jr.'s, uh, he had snapshots of video that he had taken himself. And so to Brad's point, I think part of this, if the SDNY and the federal federal government is looking into this from the lens of these civil allegations is to see how much of it is true. And if any of this is true, could criminal charges be levied against Sean Combs? Now, some of these civil allegations came up because of a look back window for civil allegations to be brought uh, through New York's Adult Survivor Act. But some of these charges, like sex trafficking, have no statute of limitations and they have severe um, penalties under the law. And so law enforcement be looking at this and saying, if these are true, and there are videos and there are cameras or that these allegations can be corroborated through what we find in Sean Combs' home, then they will move to the next step, which would potentially be evidence collecting or arresting someone. And Brian, if you can, just quickly, while we only have a few more moments here, uh, help our audience understand how far back they're looking. I mean, some of these allegations stem some 30 years ago, right? And they, 
in some ways coincide with the uprising of his career. Yes, a, a lot of these allegations just from the lawsuits I think stem back from 93 or 94 and go all the way up into the production of his latest album in 2023 and 2024. And so we're talking about a long uh, span of time, but even just outside of those lawsuits as well, there has always been these kind of whispers or rumors in the background as to Sean Combs' involvement to various activities. Uh, if you're talking about Cassie's allegation of him being part of uh, Kid Cudi's vehicle being exploded or other allegations of assault or, or shooting or sexual harassment from Rodney Jones Jr. and the other uh, four uh, alleged victims. This is a long investigation. I think this is only the beginning because there's a lot to have to corroborate from the people who have come forward and also a potential of people who we haven't seen come forward to see what evidence they have and to see whether or not it's true, rumor, or something in between. All right, Brian Buckmeyer uh, and Brad Garrett, thank you so much, both of you, for your expertise. I will be continuing to cover this story as it develops because, again, as we came on the air, that had just happened, and as soon as we learn more, we will bring that to you live.